Auditorium in Kansas City, Missouri. The semifinals of the NAIA tournament are ready to get going. A couple of top seeds facing off. The number one overall seeded Loyola Wolfpack and the number one seed Arizona Christian Firestorm. Nate Catter with you courtside at Municipal Auditorium here downtown in KC. And uh, we should have an excellent game between a couple of teams, both having one better than 30 games. Arizona Christian at 31 and four, Loyola at 35 and one. And they will play for a spot in the NAIA national title game tomorrow night. ACU is headlined by Angelo Johnson, the five foot eight senior guard from Melbourne, Florida, who is in his uh, second year with the team and went off for 22 points Saturday in the quarterfinal win for the Firestorm over William Jessup. Meanwhile, for Loyola, the uh, star for the Wolfpack, and part of a core that has been together for quite a few years now for Stacey Hollowell, and that is Miles Burns, the four-time reigning defensive player of the year in the SSAC. He had 17 points to go with 13 rebounds and four steals on Saturday in Loyola's quarterfinal win over the College of Idaho, a hard-fought ball game and the end a seven point win for the pack who move on now to the fab four. Burns will be joined in the uh, starting lineup by Brandon Davis, Andrew Fava, Zach Reitzel, and Terry Smith Jr. Meanwhile, for Arizona Christian, the starting five alongside Angelo Johnson, Micah Bradford, Dennis Flowers, Bryce Davis, and Robbie Wilson. They are under the direction of 10th year head coach, Jeff Rudder, looking for his 230th win leading ACU as you get a look at Johnson's numbers those team high 22 points against William Jessup on Saturday he averages better than a dozen per game for the season for the Firestorm 31 and 4 this year 15 and 3 in the GSAC Loyola 35 and 1 17 and 1 in the SSAC our officials tonight are Chris Stevens, Derek Anganis, and Evan Bird and we are ready to go Burns will jump for Loyola against Davis for ACU. The tip is controlled by Arizona Christian. Dennis Flowers, the first year Firestorm transfer from Carroll College, which was here in Kansas City a year ago and made it as far as the quarterfinals. Davis goes over five and an offensive foul. Bryce Davis, the senior from Glendale, who has moved into a much bigger role this year, starting nearly every game for the Firestorm. Picks up a foul just 15 seconds in. Loyola certainly a little bit undersized in this matchup, so you'd expect to see exactly that. An experienced player like Fava standing in there to take the charge. Here's Brandon Davis back in the lineup for Loyola. He had started every game until the quarterfinal on Saturday when he was out with food poisoning that prevented him from playing. Burns on the attack, left it short, has his own miss and follows it in. Loyola as a team was battling stomach issues after something that they ate earlier on in this week. They had to get IVs to get as many players available as possible for the quarterfinal on Saturday. Here's a three from Angelo Johnson, rims out. Smith had his hands on it and Burns corrals the rebound for Loyola. There were quite a few players, including a couple of starters who were still feeling the effects of that in Loyola's quarterfinal win. Survived against College of Idaho. Here's Reitzel, the SSAC Player of the Year. Smith after the rebound, knocked out of bounds, last off Loyola. And Arizona Christian will take it. Still looking for its first points of the game. Davis was the only Wolfpack player who missed the ball game. 
He has been a big beast. Newcomer averaging better than 15 a game and the Newcomer of the Year in the SSAC, but Loyola able to win even without him. Bradford goes to Johnson. Flowers. Good feed. Micah Bradford off the mark. Davis tries to follow, and he has the rebound wrestled away by Burns, who's fouled by Dennis Flowers. That is a couple of team fouls against Arizona Christian in the opening minute, 44. And Loyola will have it back again. Loyola was here in Kansas City last year, made it to the quarterfinals. Team that ultimately just seemed like it was lacking depth a little bit, didn't quite have enough offensive firepower. Both of those issues have been resolved, and Davis with the basketball is a big reason for both. Burns goes inside to Reitzel on the reverse for two. Reitzel averages better than 18 and a half a game. Conference player of the year. Fourth time he's been first team all league in his career. Johnson slashes to the rim. Can't finish. Fava got a hand on it. And Burns comes up with yet another rebound. Davis finds a cutting right. So and it's six nothing Loyola in the opening two and a half minutes. Pair of quick buckets for Zach Reitzel. Burns out of the top of the zone defense for Loyola. Seems to be how Stacy Hollowell and the Wolfpack are trying to combat their size disadvantage. Davis gets the friendly roll over Fava and that's gonna be where Arizona Christian wants to attack because Davis has a big size advantage if they can get it to him on the interior of that zone. Three minutes gone by, Loyola basketball with a four-point lead. Right, so kicks to Burns, wants a three. Loyola feeling it early. Not a big strength of Burns game, just a 28% three-point shooter for the season, but he hits his first one, and it's a seven-point advantage for the Wolfpack. Flowers long two is true. Burns and Reitzel have carried the entirety of the scoring punch so far for Loyola. Davis more of a facilitator to this point. Reitzel with eight to shoot. Burns wants another. Off the heel, Smith grabs the offensive rebound. Can't stick it back, but has it again. Still loose in the middle and eventually corralled by Davis. Here's Johnson on the run. Wilson attacks. Davis on Smith, took some contact, didn't get the call, and Loyola can clear it. Reitzel has five already. Should say four points for Reitzel this far. Underneath, Fava, he can stroke it. That was a tough shot with Bradford right on him. And a whistle and a foul against Loyola. Terry Smith Jr. is going to pick up his first. Gives us a chance to meet the 10th year head coach of the Arizona Christian Firestorm, Jeff Rudder. Steered this program to its first ever Fab Four appearance. Postseason got off to sort of an inauspicious start for ACU. They were upset in the quarterfinals of the GSAC tournament by Westmont, a team that consistently gave them trouble this year. Snapped uh, what was a 10-game winning streak at the time, but they've turned it on since with four straight double-digit victories. Find themselves down an early hole. Five minutes gone by against Loyola. Burns gets a hand on the pass. Fava ends up with it. Here comes Loyola, three on one. Burns all the way to the rim for two. Miles Burns is feeling it. Seven points early on. For the senior from Houston who averages 15 a night, one of three 15 plus point a game scores for Loyola. Reitzel nearly swiped that pass. Johnson has numbers now. Kicks it for the corner three, and that goes down for Dominic Gonzalez, the sophomore from Glendale. Only played 12 minutes off the bench in the quarterfinal win on Saturday against William Jessup. Had just three points. 
but he's in the scoring column just after coming on. Jalen Galloway is in for the first time for Loyola as well, 20 in white. Davis with a shot clock down to five. Galloway has to hurry over Wilson. Missed the entire rim. ACU has taken possession. So the officials don't feel the need to stop play. Johnson finds a cutting fall. Hayden couldn't get the layup. Tipped up by Xander Bowers. Knocks it out to Johnson. Three bench players in for ACU, one for Loyola. Johnson with a shot clock running down. He traveled before the bucket. And that will take us into our first timeout. Loyola opened up a seven point lead in the early going. Big three from Dominic Gonzalez to keep Arizona Christian in it. It's an 11 to seven Loyola lead. Just about six and a half gone by. Semifinals underway in KC. You know, it's easy to get caught up in emotions around, oh, I feel good, or I feel like I'm getting better, or I feel like I'm getting worse. But having data, big data, over a long stretch of time allows you to actually see your work come into fruition in the form of progress. It just allows you to create a better perspective over your, your progression. To ignore it entirely is doing yourself a disservice um, because it's a resource that's available to you. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. I just love to get better, so anything that's gonna push me to my limits, I love it. It's really fun and you'll learn new things and it'll help you be a better player. All of these drills, they're really simple and then they get more advanced and the harder you work at it, the better you're going to get. What you put in is what you get out and you can get a lot out of this game. we got four teams left vying for the 2022 NAIA national title. Three of them have never won one and Loyola's was in 1945. In fact, uh, the other three teams have never been even to the semifinals. Loyola's last trip was 76 years ago in 1946. So we have some fresh names here in the Fab Four this year. Galloway, nice move, did well because Bowers was set up there to take the charge. Galloway slowed his momentum and opted instead for the floater, scored it nicely. He averages just over six and a half points a game, but a very capable scorer. Bowers was fouled on his way to the rim. It's on the floor. But uh, Galloway, last year, when he was at the College of Idaho, averaged 15 points a game. So he can score a lot more than the six and a half Loyola has needed from him. This is a Wolfpack team that has a well-established core that's been together for quite some time. Bowers has his pass tipped, but corralled by Gonzalez. Hayden can hit it from out there. Didn't score on Saturday against William Jessup, but he's a 38% three-point shooter for the year. Loyola's lead trimmed to three. Right Salon Bowers couldn't get it, and Arizona Christian now could tie with another three. Angelo Johnson, the only starter on the floor for ACU, just gets it away to Bowers. Gonzalez for the tie, and burns the rebound. Burns already has five boards to go with his seven points inside the opening eight minutes. Fava's only tried one shot from the field. Davis hasn't shot the ball yet. Galloway for three. He sticks it. Jalen Galloway has five points quickly just off the bench. His new team vanquished his old team on Saturday in the quarterfinals, and he's showing us a little bit of that 
scoring punch he demonstrated for the College of Idaho the past couple of years. Bowers skips it to Gonzalez. Johnson hasn't scored yet. Tough finish, got it to go. He had a team high 22 points on Saturday in that quarterfinal victory. And it looks like ACU is gonna need him to step it up. Galloway can't hit. Johnson has the rebound and can push. Has it knocked away by Burns. He corrals it on the run, stumbling inside. Contact with Hayden and an offensive foul. Burns is furious. But he picks up the personal. After his first steal, he averages better than four per game to lead the NAIA. But that's his second personal foul. Looks like he's gonna stay on the floor. Stacy Hollowell is gonna take that chance and leave Burns out there. But you wonder, especially for a player of his defensive caliber, Hayden leaves it short, rebounded by Galloway. How those two fouls affect what he likes to do, harassing opponents on the defensive end of the floor. Davis, beautiful crossover, almost an incredible finish. Just didn't get quite enough English to spin it off the front of the rim. Here's Hayden on Galloway, offensive foul. Galloway got there to the baseline, cut off Hayden. And the charge goes against ACU. Three team fouls against both sides. And substitutions for the Firestorm. Darius Godot sits back down quickly, as does Hayden. A couple of starters come back on. Bryce Davis along with Robbie Wilson. Kevon Williams also in for the first time for ACU. Zach Muller on for the first time for Loyola, five and white. And he takes over for Burns, who will get at least a short break with those two fouls. Reitzel on Davis, spins free. Galloway wanted it. Muller steps in, only five to shoot. Galloway for three, way short. Davis had the rebound for a moment and then able to control it. Loyola by four, but ACU hanging in there after weathering the early run. This zone has caused them problems. Good look for Wilson. Rebounded by Galloway. Loyola pushes. Davis for three. Off the heel. Rebounded by Davis. Loyola playing at a much higher tempo than we saw last season. They were a more typical defensively oriented team. There was a triple team that left Davis alone for the stop. Just a two point lead for Loyola. Fava for three, had that shot tipped. Ends up with Brandon Davis underneath and he is crunched by a soaring Robbie Wilson. And that will take us into a break. The fourth foul against Arizona Christian in the first half. And we'll be back in a moment. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with auto focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today.
championship is brought to you by Box Out Sports. Samson Professional Weight Room Solutions. Open Doors. Spalding. Precision Printing. And by Athlete MH, Cutler Wellness Programs, LLC. Loyola leads 16 to 14. Just over 10 minutes gone by in the first half, and Andrew Fava is fouled on a three off the inbound. Fava has missed his first two. The defense has been right on him from Arizona Christian. He is an excellent three-point shooter. The senior from Baltimore, Maryland, averages nearly 10 points a game. The vast majority of his field goal attempts have been three-pointers. This year, almost 85% have come from beyond the arc. Second team all league this year, shoots 85% at the foul line and gets the first of three. He uh, originally came to Loyola after a career at the University of Florida, expecting just to be a grad transfer a couple of years ago. He got hurt six games into that season, which allowed him to retain his eligibility for last year, and that, of course, didn't count against anybody. So he came to New Orleans as a grad transfer, instead has spent three seasons at Loyola, and now ranks in the top ten in career three-pointers made in the history of the Wolfpack program. He's hit 180 in his tenure in New Orleans that was supposed to only last a couple semesters. Fava checks out with Loyola now up by five. Johnson, Wilson, and Davis, the three starters for ACU on the floor, along with a couple of bench options, Bowers and Williams. Cameron Dumas is in for the first time for Loyola, backup point guard, although he's taking Fava's spot at this moment. Lob inside to Wilson, harassed by Dumas. Reitzel's help arrived. Bryce Davis through contact has the finish. Dumas played a much bigger role Saturday in the quarterfinal win over College of Idaho than would have been expected with Davis unavailable due to the uh, stomach issues when Loyola dealt with food poisoning. Muller's on the floor as well, so Loyola's three point guard options all out there together with Reitzel and Smith. Muller for three off the heel. Reitzel grabs the offensive rebound. Davis tried to take the hit, and it's an offensive foul. Wow. Don't know about that one. We've had uh, four charges so far, not a single block. You wonder how that might affect the way that uh, any of these players think about how they're defending under the basket going forward. Davis was shuffling his feet here all the way up until the contact, which was pretty substantial to be fair, but Reitzel didn't exactly lower his shoulder. Lob to Wilson. ACU has thrown a lot of these dangerous passes over the top of the zone. The good cut by Johnson to get free. Wilson gets it back to him. Thought about the three. Here it comes from Godot, and he left it well short, right on line, but didn't have enough. Loyola can set up the offense. Galloway back on the floor in place of Smith. Williams takes a tumble. Galloway for three. Big shot for Loyola. And the Wolfpack lead is back out to six. Galloway has a game-high eight points, including a couple of threes. And a foul called on Arizona Christian. Williams in transition. Stuck a, a little chicken wing out there, according to our official Chris Stevens, to clear some space. And a turnover back to Loyola. Neither team shooting especially well so far. Loyola at 36%, Arizona Christian 44%, although the Firestorm just two of eight from three. And they've turned the ball over six times against just two for Loyola. They've also been called for six fouls, so anything further in this half, Loyola will be shooting free throws no matter what. Galloway making Wilson chase him all the way around. Dumas for three. Loyola's starting to hit some big shots, and it's now out to a nine-point Wolfpack lead, biggest of the night so far. Pass deflected. Here is Davis. Kicks it for Dumas. Wants another 12-point lead for the Wolfpack. Just like that, Loyola has rattled off nine straight points. 
ACU's deficit has gone from three up to 12, and a 10-second violation of the backcourt called against Arizona Christian. The number one overall seed, Loyola, playing like it. Davis checks out, Fava back on for Loyola. I think Dumas probably has a few more minutes in him after back-to-back -back threes. He has the hot hand of the moment for the Wolfpack, who have now hit five of 12 three-pointers. Fava pops out, his best look so far. Off the heel, Muller rebounds. Nice up and under, had his shot tipped, and Wilson corrals the board. Johnson, downhill all the way, up and under, double clutch, couldn't get it. Here comes Dumas, Loyola ball with a 12-point lead. Reitzel has been pretty quiet at the offensive end. Davis has done a good job underneath. One on one, and Davis strips it. Godot wants another three. Missed this one off the left side of the iron. Johnson thought he was fouled on the rebound, didn't get the call. This Loyola spurt from behind the three-point arc is also easing Stacy Hollowell's mind as far as keeping Miles Burns on the bench with those two fouls. Galloway takes a bump from Wilson, turns and scores over top of him. Tough shot from Jalen Galloway, who has 10 points already to lead all scorers, along with four rebounds. Dumas knocked down by Johnson and a blocking foul. He went hard into the video board across the way. Something tells me based on those last two whistles that uh, charge block calls might be debated as this game goes on by the coaches. Tough shot by Galloway who's provided a big lift for Loyola off the bench. Ten points on four of seven shooting including a couple of threes. Micah Bradford almost threw that one too tall for Johnson. Bradford attacks. Might have dragged the pivot foot. Davis, though, has been doing some work in the paint. Davis has 10 points on only six shots, but he hasn't gotten a lot of scoring help. He's the only Arizona Christian player with multiple field goals so far tonight. Loyola lead back down to 12. Hayden on Galloway. Good ball fake, and Galloway scores off the window. Jalen Galloway reaching deep in his bag tonight. 14-point lead for the Wolfpack, matching their largest. ACU just gets it over in time. Bradford pass Fava. Nice feed, but Bowers is turned back by Galloway. Here comes Loyola. Dumas on the run. Muller takes the behind-the-back feed and scores. Timeout, Arizona Christian. It's all clicking for Loyola. Bowers went for the jam. He was turned back. Dumas went behind his back to Muller in transition for the finish. 4.32 to go in the first half. Loyola has opened up a 16-point lead with a trip to the NAIA National Championship on the line. One more. One more. One more, please. One more, guys. One more. Set. Hop. Hey, kid. Yeah, we'll take one more. Oh, oh. one more. Wow! Education is more than academia. 
Education is the experiences we have that influence our future selves and the environments in which we thrive. We find purpose through experience. And you're here to make the world a better place. So your experience matters. Morningside.edu Loyola leads by 16 with 4.32 to go in the first half. This pressure defense for the Wolfpack has caused real problems for Arizona Christian, which has turned the ball over eight times already. Loyola wanted a ninth on a would-be travel. Johnson left open for three. Off the front rim and Reitzel rebounds. ACU is just two of ten from deep. Muller in transition, got it back and scores. Loyola shooting is heated up. The Wolfpack also been called for only five fouls. ACU has not attempted a free throw. Bryce Davis is the only player for the Firestorm to have multiple field goals. And Bowers is fouled, so there will be the first ACU free throws coming up. Galloway leads all scorers with 12 for Loyola. Davis leads ACU with eight points of the 18 for the Firestorm. And Bowers, 59% free throw shooter at the line. Gives us a chance to look at the NAIA championship site brackets. 16 teams came to Kansas City, only four remain. Loyola and Arizona Christian in action now. We'll see Talladega and Thomas Moore coming up tonight at 8 Eastern. And tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN3, our championship game. The winner of this one against the winner of Talladega and Thomas Moore. 64-team tournament. Only four teams are left. And all of them were ranked in the top six of the final NAIA coaches poll. All of them won in two seeds. Loyola was number two in that poll, but the number one overall seed coming into the tournament. And the Wolfpack are playing like it. Muller can't escape Kevon Williams. Pass was kicked. And the shot clock will reset to 20. The Wolfpack cruised in their early games down in New Orleans to get here to Kansas City. Beat Benedict in Mesa by 37 and Florida College by 31. Then they beat Faulkner in the round of 16. Their first game here in KC by 18 points, which avenged, avenged their only loss this season. And then their uh, closest shave against College of Idaho on Saturday, a seven-point win. The Wolfpack have won 19 games in a row. Their only loss of the season was to Faulkner back on January 17th. And, of course, we have two SSAC teams in the Final Four. Should uh, Loyola win this game and Talladega win later tonight, they would meet for the fourth time since February 12th in the championship game. Played twice in the regular season, once in the SSAC tournament, and potentially could be on a collision course still here in Kansas City. Galloway, a reliable free throw shooter, 71%, but misses the front end. Arizona Christian trying to cut into it before halftime. Here's Williams, and he is fouled by Davis. That's the seventh against Loyola, so Williams will shoot free throws. He is a 67% foul shooter on the season. Known more uh, for his efforts on the defensive end of the floor, which we've seen already in his minutes off the bench in the first half tonight. And he misses the front end. See if Reitzel can get going for Loyola. The Wolfpack have done all of this without a lot from him. High off the window, and Williams the rebound. Miles Burns had that fantastic start for Loyola, but has been on the bench with his two fouls. He had seven points and five rebounds in about eight minutes. Here's Patrick Fisher getting his first minutes. Turns away from Fava, finds an open Xander Bowers who cans a deep two. Bowers averages eight a game. Senior from Gilroy, California, had 14 and seven off the bench Saturday against William Jessup. He makes a big impact at the defensive end as well. ACU's all-time career blocks leader. The marquee set of the second round of this tournament against Xavier of Louisiana. 
Brandon Davis saves it, but Bowers steals it. Here comes Johnson racing over Dumas and a foul. Angelo Johnson will go to the free throw line. He has only two points so far tonight after his team high 22 on Saturday against William Jessup, and he scored in double figures in 12 of the last 13 games. That 22-point output was his second highest of the year. Johnson came to ACU after a couple of years at the College of Central Florida. Honorable mention NAIA All-American last year and earned his uh, second straight GSAC Defensive Player of the Year honor this season. Reitzel in transition. Davis has done a really good job against him down there on the block. Galloway tries to turn away from Bowers. Dumas resets it inside two minutes in the first half with Loyola up by 14. Dumas has to hurry, tough shot, can't get it, and Davis clears the rebound. Williams with his head up all the way. Williams leaves it for Bowers, beautiful feed, and a left-hand finish by Xander Bowers to cut it down to a dozen-point firestorm deficit, and Stacy Hollowell calls his first timeout. Bowers has provided a little lift for ACU off the bench. Loyola has uh, stretched this lead out, of course, to as many as uh, 18. But ACU hanging around. Loyola up by a dozen with a minute 44 to go in the opening half. The Wolfpack, as you see there, rode here to the Fab Four. Mentioned those blowout wins over Benedict and Mason and Florida College before a relatively smooth win over Faulkner, the only team to have beaten the Wolfpack this year. And then a more difficult one Saturday against College of Idaho when Loyola was missing Brandon Davis, as well as had several other players dealing with stomach issues after some food poisoning earlier in the week. Fava deep three, cans it. First one for Andrew Fava tonight. He has six points after three free throws earlier. And Loyola lead back out to 15. See if AC, ACU can get it down around 10 before halftime. There's Davis. He was really the sole source of Firestorm offense in the early going. Fisher out to Williams. Bowers with seven to shoot. Fisher has a clean look. Davis after the offensive rebound, pulls it in, goes up and scores. That was Bryce Davis over Brandon Davis for two. He's in the double figures now with 10, the first for ACU. And ACU likely will get the final shot of the half, depending on how Loyola plays these next few seconds. Davis turns the corner on Johnson, knocked out of bounds off Davis's leg, and ACU gets it back. Five second differential between the game and shot clock, but of course the shot will not, or the uh, clock rather, will not stop on a made basket at the end of the first half. So if ACU runs this all the way down to the final few seconds of the shot clock, they can get most likely the final good shot of the half because Loyola would have to pull the ball out of the basket, inbound it and then get something up the floor. So the Firestorm have a chance here to cut it down to 11 or even 10 with a three-pointer. Fisher is fouled. Dumas called for his third personal foul. It's the ninth against Loyola, so some pressure now on Patrick Fisher, a very good free throw shooter this year, 86%. That's a big free throw to earn a second. ACU just three of six at the free throw line in this first half. He gets both, so the Loyola lead is trimmed to 11. 
The uh, scoreboard here in the arena has 39-29, as does the score graphic that we're showing, but that's not right. It should be 39-28. As the Loyola lead, and a foul on right, so why? ACU looked like it was fouling on purpose. Reitzel's only a 55% free throw shooter. This is interesting. It looked like ACU wanted to do this all the way. Went to the bench to give the foul. And they're going to try to steal a possession here by getting Reitzel to potentially miss the front end of a one and one. Interesting strategy at the end of the half employed by Jeff Rutter. Reitzel rims it out, rebounded by Davis. Williams with 10 seconds. ACU has to hurry, but a chance for a big momentum swing into the half. Williams terminated the dribble in the wrong spot. Bowers was clobbered. He's still down. Williams throws it up, no good, and the half is over. Again, the score you're seeing is not correct. It's a 39-28 Loyola lead at halftime. We'll pack the number one overall seed up by 11 at the break. Let's be threshers. And notice I didn't say hard-working threshers, or honest threshers, or exceptional threshers, for there are no other kind. There are only threshers, and threshers are what we are. Be a thresher, and then we'll be ready for anything. We'll be ready for the exam, the game, the interview, the job, the family, the sorrows, and the joys, whatever life throws at us, for we are threshers. cultivating a spirit-empowered life to learn and grow together with professors who invest in you and an education that will equip you to live out the story God has for you. This is your campus. These are your people. This is your future. We are VU. Will be supported. Your voice will be heard. Your goals will be recognized. You will be career ready. You will get real world experience. You will succeed. Your faith will be welcomed. You will be inspired. At home, heard, accomplished, energized, a leader. Your professors will know your name. You will create. We'll live with purpose. Be involved. You. You. You belong here. 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 I belong here. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with huddle focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the focus app, instant uploads, and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today.
Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. I love Dubuque. Why go anywhere else? Why go anywhere else? Why go anywhere else? Inside these walls, the game is being changed. Art and science, spirit and innovation, a place like no other, where excellence is the goal. Here is the magic and wonder you seek. Unlimited experience, make it yours. This is where the cool stuff happens. You've got a world to discover, change the game. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. You know, it's easy to get caught up in emotions around, oh, I feel good, or I feel like I'm getting better, or I feel like I'm getting worse. But having data, big data, over a long stretch of time allows you to actually see your work come into fruition in the form of progress. It just allows you to create a better perspective over your, your progression. To ignore it entirely is doing yourself a disservice um, because it's a resource that's available to you.
Loyola leads Arizona Christian 39-28 at halftime. Nate Gatter back with you from Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City where we are 20 minutes away from sending one of these teams into the NAIA National Championship game tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time on ESPN3. Look at some of the highlights from the first half. It was really the Miles Burns show in the uh, first seven or eight minutes. He had seven points and five rebounds for Loyola, although uh, then picked up his second foul very quickly and in the end didn't even make it halfway through the first half before he had to sit down next to his head coach, Stacy Hollowell, and he stayed there until the break. At that point, Jalen Galloway took over the majority of the offensive workload for the Wolfpack. He had a dozen points along with five rebounds. Bryce Davis had 10 points and six boards for Arizona Christian. But the Firestorm really uh, couldn't find enough answers, especially from the three-point line. Loyola shot six of 14 from deep. ACU was just two of 11. And uh, the Firestorm only four of seven from the free throw line as well. They also had eight turnovers against Loyola's four. That's part of what makes the Wolfpack so difficult. They turn teams over so often and turn the ball over uh, very rarely relative to how they're generating them. So there's a tale of the tape as we get a look at some of the stats from the first half. Loyola shot the ball better from the floor, from the three-point line. They were better on the glass. They turned the ball over substantially less often and uh, generated points off those turnovers as well. That was a big part of it, the number of live ball turnovers that ACU had that turned into easy Loyola buckets in transition. The Wolfpack were better in uh, at least to some degree in every phase of the game in the opening 20 minutes, but ACU did manage to cut into it a little bit late on in the half. Loyola had stretched the lead out at one point, uh, getting close to 20, and in the end, ACU was able to cut it down to 11, and then Jeff Rutter went for a, an interesting strategy, I thought, at the very end of that first half, where he fouled Zach Reitzel on purpose with the shot clock off at about 11 or 12 seconds to go in the first half. He sent Reitzel just a 55% free throw shooter to the line, knowing that it was one and one for Loyola. Reitzel missed the front end exactly as ACU wanted, but they uh, weren't able to get the ball into the front court very efficiently, and as a result, didn't get a good shot, but they almost managed to steal a possession off of fouling Reitzel in the one and one. Fava left wide open, couldn't get it. Smith, the offensive rebound. Here's Brandon Davis, he was quiet in the first half. Right, so with a feed underneath to Smith, has his shot blocked by Bryce Davis, but a foul. And Terry Smith Jr. will go to the free throw line, the senior from Chicago. He shoots 53% at the line. Speaking of a quiet first half, Angelo Johnson had just three points after he went for 22 in the quarterfinal victory over William Jessup. Of course, we would expect to see more offense from him in the second 20 minutes. He's been in double figures in 12 of the last 13 games for ACU. First trip to the Fab Four for Arizona Christian in school history. First for Loyola since 1946. And they are the only team remaining in the NAIA to have ever made it this far before. They have won the national championship once. It was in 1945. None of the remaining three teams have ever won it. In fact, none of them have even been to the Fab Four. Davis throws it ahead to Burns. Nice move to get past Johnson, and he scores. So Miles Burns doesn't waste any time, just 50 seconds into his return to the court with those two fouls that cost him much of the first half. And he's back in the scoring column with nine points now, has his second steal. Out to Brandon Davis for three. Rims out. Davis, that is Bryce Davis, ends up with a rebound out to Micah Bradford. Here comes ACU in transition. Flowers was very quiet in the first half. Davis underneath against Reitzel, double teamed and has his shot blocked by Smith out of bounds. Eighty seconds into the second half, three points already for Loyola. Stacy Hollowell in his eighth year, the SSAC Coach of the Year. Trying to get his wolf back into the championship game. Burns swats that shot from Flowers. He was up way in front of that one. Bradford to the rim, couldn't get it to go, and Smith the rebound. Smith's going to lead the break in transition, and now finds the point guard, Brandon Davis.
Davis deliberately setting up the offense. Smith attacks Wilson, rolls off the rim, and Davis the rebound. ACU has not shown much of the three-point shooting in its arsenal. Bradford shoots it well, as does Flowers, as does Johnson. Flowers snakes all the way to the rim, tough finish. He had only six points, one of eight from the field against William Jessup on Saturday. Averages 10 and a half for the season. And played well for Carroll in this building last year. Fava, tough shot, got it. Andrew Fava's standard for open is a lot different than most players. He's hit a couple of threes, he has nine points tonight. Flowers thought about the answer. Bradford bumped by Smith and a foul. Terry Smith Jr. picks up his second personal foul. He and Burns have two apiece for Loyola, three on Cameron Dumas in that first half. Meanwhile, for ACU, Flowers and Bryce Davis have two apiece along with Robbie Wilson. Flowers in traffic, Burns strips it away. Here's Reitzel all the way for two-hand stop. 17-point Loyola lead. Flowers to Bryce Davis for the answer. Reitzel again on the drive. Through contact, wanted a call, didn't get it. And ACU the other way. Miles Burns has been a problem at this end. More steals than anyone else in the NAIA. And there's a foul on Brandon Davis. It's his second, and the second against the team. Get another look at Burns with the steal on Flowers. Also had a great block of a Flowers shot earlier, and it ends with a right still stop. Davis sits down for Loyola and for ACU. Brandon for Loyola, Bryce for Arizona Christian. Xander Bowers on for the Firestorm. Zach Muller for the Wolfpack. He was good in the first half, as was Bowers. But this zone has given ACU big problems. Johnson off the heel, rebounded by Flowers. Fall away from 15 is true. You'd think ACU is simply going to have to hit a few of those three-pointers as this half goes on. If they want to get Loyola out of that zone that has turned the firestorm over time and again. 11 turnovers already for ACU with 16 and change still to go. Yvonne Williams checks in, and Micah Bradford takes a seat. Here's Muller. Smith steps past Wilson beautifully, couldn't finish. Burns ends up with a rebound. He's left open for three. Reitzel has another offensive rebound for Loyola. Third chance coming for the Wolfpack. Muller comes to get it with 10 to shoot. Smith against Wilson, goes to the baseline, and he's fouled. Terry Smith Jr. will shoot two. He split a pair earlier in the half. He has two points now to go with five rebounds. Has missed all four of his shots for the field. Second one is too strong. Muller tangling with Flowers for the rebound. Batted in the air, still lose. And last off of Dennis Flowers. So Loyola will get a fourth chance on this possession with a point already in the bag. Wolfpack up by 14. Trying to earn the first berth in tomorrow night's NAIA national title game. Muller working on Johnson. Here's Reitzel. 
the lob for Burns, who was fouled by Williams. Well, Loyola will take it underneath. That's the third against ACU early in the second half. Burns against Flowers. A moving screen called on Smith, trying to get Faba free. Faba went to shoot the ball anyway, and Kevon Williams gave him a shove in the chest. And Chris Stevens is telling Kevon Williams that that's about enough. That he's used, uh, he's used up whatever latitude he has. But this foul was called on Smith. It was his third personal foul. So he and Dumas have three apiece for Loyola. Here's Flowers. Tries to split the double and a foul. Called against Zach Muller. Loyola's trying to turn up the pressure. But it's being called a little bit tighter so far in this second half. ACU basketball down by 14 when we get back in just a moment. We're all looking for the chance to do more, explore more, create more. And that's exactly what we offer our students at Thomas More. A truly inspired education that opens a universe of opportunity. By immersing students in the very best learning environment, we give them the opportunity to become the people they were created to be, to live a fuller life, to become thinkers, innovators, conquerors of the status quo, to make it more. Thomas More University. It's 30 or 48 to 34 with 14.45 to go in the second half. ACU has the basketball. There does seem to be a path back in the game for the Firestorm, but it's going to involve hanging on to the ball much better than they've been able to so far and hitting some threes. Johnson goes past right, so pulls up, couldn't get it off the window. Bowers was there for the rebound, but it just hung on the rim too long and he couldn't stay in the air any longer. Officials generally have allowed a lot of physicality in the paint so far in this game. Bowers and Burns tangled up for that rebound. Brandon Davis back on for the Wolfpack, and he is fouled by Kevon Williams, who is not pleased. That's the fourth foul against ECU. Williams picks up his third. Davis still hasn't scored. Reitzel has been pretty quiet at this end as well. He's hit by Davis, but scores anyway. Eight points for Reitzel to go with five boards and three assists. And he'll go to the free throw line where he missed one earlier, just at the end of that first half when Jeff Rutter tried to steal a possession. Took a little hit from Bryce Davis there and then got another one on the arm. Right in front of the official. Now has a chance at a three-point play and cashes in. Loyola's lead back out to 17. And a foul's gonna be called on Arizona Christian. This is gonna be a dead ball technical foul on Xander Bowers for a tangle, jostling for the would-be rebound that never came. 
Derek Anganis was the official who made the call. He's talking to Chris Stevens now. And Evan Berg, the third member of the crew, is going to come over and discuss it. But initially, Anganis had called a foul, and then when the ball went in, it was going to have to be called a dead ball contact technical. And it looks like there's going to be a review. Chris Stevens is going to come over and tell us exactly what's going on. So they are going to review, and it will be to determine whether the foul in question meets the criteria to be considered a dead ball technical foul. And uh, would imagine uh, they will want to see whatever looks are available here of whatever was going on. Well, players were jostling around in the paint for a rebound. In the end, Reitzel hit the free throw anyway, so it didn't even matter. So our crew is going to uh, call up these replay looks, and you are going to see at home what the officials are going to see on their monitor as well as they're taking a second look at this to determine exactly what happened involving Xander Bowers and uh, at least one Loyola player. So here is the look, and it's Bowers coming together with Galloway. We're going to back this up and look at it again. And based on that look, it doesn't seem like Bowers did a whole lot, although Anganis, he's the official there on the baseline who's coming in, and you can see him here make the, uh, make the signal as that advances for the tee with his hands. See what other angles that we have here to show him. So Bowers is kind of hooked on. I was going to say he had a better angle to see it than our main camera angle. And so Bowers is hooked on. So if we can see what he does potentially with his arm, if he really rips it down here and pulls Galloway violently, could see where you would justify calling that a dead ball technical. But from that initial angle up high, it didn't look all that venomous. And now the officials are going to talk it over after they saw exactly what you did at home. Not sure there's a perfect angle that shows us everything that we'd want to see, just because you're looking from the wrong direction on our main camera, and then it's not exactly in the shot when you're looking at it from the baseline like we did there at the end. But I think they are going to stick with this as a dead ball technical foul assessed to Xander Bowers. The ACU senior, and that's going to send Andrew Fava to the free throw line for Loyola. He's already hit all three of his free throws tonight. He has nine points. And he has another shot coming. So he splits the pair. 85% free throw shooter who looked almost shocked that second one didn't go down. Can be more difficult shooting without anybody on the lines like that. Jeff Rudder was not happy with the explanation, but seems as though at least he's going to let it go. 18-point lead for Loyola with the basketball. So this could become a massive trip for the Wolfpack. Reitzel got a three-point play. Then Fava adds one on the technical, and Loyola keeps possession. So it's a four-point possession already for the Wolfpack. Davis for three. Off the heel, rebounded by Burns. A never-ending possession for Loyola. Fava comes to get it. Here's Miles Burns against Williams. Johnson tries to rip it from Davis. Goes behind his back to Reitzel. Has it swatted by Bowers. Fava, an impossible shot. And it comes up way short and off the mark. So a shot clock violation ends the Loyola possession. That probably lasted in the uncomfortably more than a minute. ACU had uh, trimmed this deficit into manageable territory, but it's back out to 18 points, and the Firestorm going to have to make progress in a hurry. Johnson has to lob a pass all the way across to Gonzalez. Never had a chance, and Burns scores the other way. 
largest lead of the night for Loyola. It's out to 20 points. Arizona Christian is throwing these cross-court passes just hoping, and very few of them have found their intended recipient. They're having to initiate their offense 30, 35 feet out for the basket. Gonzalez has a good look at a three. Davis grabs the offensive rebound. He's double teamed. Still works into the paint. Scores. Count it. Plus the foul. So Davis has a team high 14. In fact, a game high 14 now. And Zach Reitzel picks up the foul. His second. And the fifth against Loyola. Sends Davis to the free throw line. His first attempt of the night. 69% free throw shooter this year. Really nice game for Bryce Davis, who had 16 and four in only 19 minutes in his start Saturday against William Jessup. He has 15 and eight on seven of eight shooting so far tonight. Burns against Williams. A lot of contact, and the foul goes on Kevon Williams. That's his fourth. Williams has been becoming progressively more and more frustrated with how he's been officiated. And to be fair to him, Miles Burns was initiating at least some of the contact with his free hand and forearm, but he'll go to the free throw line where he has not had an attempt yet tonight. Shoots 48% for the year. That is one area of weakness for Loyola, but there are very, very few. Misses the front end, and Reitzel can't corral it. Burns and Reitzel maybe the two best players in the SSAC, certainly right up there. Reitzel the overall player of the year, and Burns the defensive player of the year, but neither one of them shoot free throws very well. 17-point lead still intact for Loyola. Johnson weaves through traffic, finds Davis underneath. Good hesitation, and he scores. Patience from Bryce Davis, who has 17 points now. He's accounted for almost half of ACU's scoring in this game. Here's Brandon Davis. Tough catch by Reitzel, scores in the foul. It was a good idea by Brandon Davis in the end. His pass was a little bit low off the bounce. Reitzel had to go down and corral it around his knees. But he made the catch cleanly, and that allowed him to finish even through the contact. He has joined Jalen Galloway and Miles Burns, along with Andrew Fava in double figures, four of them for Loyola have scored 10-plus. And now at the free throw line where he's two of three tonight. Fifty-seven thirty-nine is the Loyola lead. ACU already rolling the ball up the floor, trying to save whatever time is available. Two of 13 from three-point range. Just don't see a way back for the Firestorm if that doesn't change to affect this Loyola defense. Steal by Brandon Davis. Fava for three, had it tipped, and Bowers corrals the rebound then throws it out off Brandon Davis. Nice play by Xander Bowers. Not only to get to the rebound, but then have the presence of mind to throw it out of bounds and save possession for Arizona Christian. Johnson triggers the offense. Another pass almost tipped, but gets to Gonzalez. Bowers works the baseline beautifully, but can't finish. Davis the follow, won't go. Bowers again in traffic, and he's fouled. Reitzel picks up the foul. It's his third. So I wonder if Loyola would think about sitting him at least for a little while. Looks like Stacey Hollowell's going to leave him on the floor for the moment. Lob inside. Bowers couldn't get it. And it's another Arizona Christian turnover, the 14th of the night. Loyola has turned the ball over only six times. The Wolfpack have 18 points off of turnovers. The Firestorm have just two, and that is essentially the difference in the game. Reitzel underneath, working on Davis. He's fouled. 
Might have been on Hayden, who came over to help. And it is on Paul Hayden. It's his second. And the ninth already against Arizona Christian in just under nine minutes in this second half. So this is a one and one for Reitzel. And Loyola will shoot two free throws on any subsequent fouls the remainder of this game. Really the only thing that the Wolfpack haven't done well tonight. Just 8 of 14 at the free throw line, 57%. Right till 2 of 3. And he gets the first one. But that's the, the difference is the ability to generate turnovers in Loyola's defense and how well the Wolfpack have turned them into efficient points at the other end. Then the three-point shooting. Loyola has hit seven threes on 35%. ACU has hit just two on 15%. Fisher inside to Davis, patiently turns free, had his shot blocked, and Reitzel pulls it in. Reitzel sprinting in transition, contact with Bowers and a foul. 20-point lead for Loyola, and Reitzel can extend it further at the free throw line. Reitzel has two. He's been living at the free throw line so far in the second half. And shooting pretty well. That was his second miss. He's four of six, which is still uh, well beyond his season number of 55%. Three-time All-NAIA selection, including second-team All-America last year. Reached the 1,000-point plateau before even the end of his sophomore year, and he almost ran down that rebound. That is above all else for all the quality Loyola has on the court, and it's considerable. It's the togetherness and the hustle of this team that stands out, and that hasn't changed from last season when they just didn't quite have enough off the bench or at the offensive end of the floor, but a little bit more depth, a little bit more quality in this team now. Hayden on the pull-up, got it. And that's allowed the defense to become really overwhelming. How well-schooled and disciplined they are, keeping that shape in the zone, forcing turnovers. Not many teams that play an ultra-aggressive zone defense well, but that's exactly what Loyola is doing tonight. And on top of that, their work rate is through the roof. Burns finishes through contact. 13 for Burns. Loyola's lead holding at 20. Inside 10 minutes to go. ACU is going to need a lot in a little amount of time. Davis scores. He has 19 and 9. Whatever happens to ACU won't be on him. And uh, Fisher just managed to generate a turnover in the backcourt. An offensive foul called on Brandon Davis. So ACU will have it back when we return. Down 18.
Arizona Christian, number one seed, staring down the barrel of an 18-point deficit to the number one overall seed, Loyola, with nine and a half to go in our first semifinal of the night. Wilson couldn't finish. Reitzel the rebound. And Loyola has it back up by 18. Don't forget Thomas Moore against Talladega. A couple of number two seeds in our second semifinal coming up later tonight. A whistle and a foul on Bowers. That will send Reitzel back to the free throw line for two now with Loyola in the double bonus. Gives us a chance to uh, get a look at what is left of the NAIA bracket in Kansas City. We are about nine minutes and 12 seconds away from, as it appears right now, sending Loyola through to the national championship game to face the winner of Talladega and Thomas Moore coming up tonight right here on the NAIA Network. And then tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 locally in Kansas City, the championship game on ESPN3. Reitzel is Loyola's leading scorer tonight. And he cashes in with both free throws in the double bonus. Give him 16 points to go with seven rebounds and four assists. There's a kick called against Loyola. There's Patrick Fisher around to Johnson. Bryce Davis is trapped, throws underneath for Fisher, couldn't handle it, and Brandon Davis races the other way. Davis nearly lost the handle. No look being to Reitzel, double clutch, hung on the rim but wouldn't go, out to Galloway, and Loyola has a fresh 20. Another Arizona Christian turnover, 15 of them tonight. Loyola has Turn those into 20 points off of turnovers. ACU has just two off of turnovers in this game. That accounts for 18 points of the 20-point gap between the teams. Not to mention then the three-point shooting. And that Loyola has attempted 20 free throws. Arizona Christian only eight. Reitzel against Davis, who has three fouls, and he's really been the only bright spot for ACU tonight. Burns for three. Got it. 23-point lead for Loyola, largest of the evening. Second three-pointer for Burns tonight. He has 16, matching Reitzel for the Loyola lead. But it seems to have stressed the Arizona Christian offense just to complete passes tonight. Wilson for three, way too strong. Hayden the rebound. Johnson for a triple. Left it short. Hayden tracks down another one. ACU is 2 of 15 from deep tonight. Wilson kicked by Reitzel. Reset the shot clock to 20. And Arizona Christian will keep it. Davis works on Galloway. Davis with contact. Couldn't get it and Burns skies up to slap the rebound back into his hands. He has 16 and nine tonight. Reitzel has 16, 7, and 5. Galloway and Fava have added 12 and 10 apiece. Brandon Davis, who averages better than 15 a game, has not scored tonight for Loyola, and still the Wolfpack lead by 23. Here is the aforementioned Davis. Goes outside to Galloway for three. And Johnson the rebound. He sprints free. ACU with a rare chance in transition. Galloway takes the hit on an offensive foul. Angelo Johnson picks up his first. And another ACU turnover, the 16th of the night. Gives us a chance to look back at that three-pointer by Miles Burns just moments ago. Of course, he is a, a player who uh, plays with a lot of energy, hard on his, his sleeve. You see that a lot of the defensive end of the floor, but on the offensive end as well. Seven minutes to go, Loyola by 23.
Reitzel goes out to Burns. Here's Smith. Fava had it slapped out of his hands by Johnson out of bounds. Four to shoot for Loyola. Burns wants a deep one. And he's still in there after the rebound. Loyola just does not quit on the offensive glass. Johnson out for Flowers, splits the double. Missed the floater too strong. Johnson can reset for ACU. Hayden for three. He gets another. Hayden's hit a couple from out there. Two of the three that have gone down for ACU from deep tonight. Still just three of 16, that's 19% for the evening. And it's a, at least a substantial piece, although not the entire puzzle, of why the Firestorm are trailing by 20 inside of six minutes to go. Reitzel got by Hayden and scored. Hayden camped out to take the charge. Reitzel avoided him and scored. He's slow to get up. And the game will be stopped for Reitzel, who says he's okay, but I would imagine Loyola might be thinking about taking him out of the game anyway. You wonder how much longer it'll go for these Loyola starters. And a timeout now is on the floor. What a finish by Reitzel with Hayden right there trying to take the charge. He came away a little worse for wear, but his Wolfpack have been on cruise control most of the night. 22-point lead for Loyola with 5.48 to go separating them from a berth in the national championship game. And again, Loyola dealt with that nearly team-wide food poisoning earlier this week that cost them Brandon Davis in what became a very hard-fought quarterfinal win over the College of Idaho. As a result, you would think that Stacey Hollowell has a particularly pressing interest, as any coach does at this stage, with the condensed schedule of a 16-team tournament here in Kansas City over the course of five days. But you would think he is particularly invested in trying to get his guys as much rest as possible with the national championship game looming tomorrow night. And you can see this is uh, the fifth game in the last 10 days for the Wolfpack, and it will be their second set of back-to-back -back games. Didn't bother them at all back in New Orleans, although that was against uh, substantially lesser competition than the, what they've seen the last couple of games and what they're going to see tomorrow night against the winner of Thomas Moore and Tamadega, assuming there is no miraculous comeback for ACU left in this one. Of course, Arizona Christian has had a really good season. You don't win 31 games without pulling some out of the end. This is an awfully steep hill for the Firestorm to climb. So you can understand Stacey Hollowell wanting to respect his opponent enough not to take his foot off the gas too early. At the same time, at what point does he need to start thinking about tomorrow night? You would think probably not much more than a couple of minutes left in this one for Loyola. If they can get under four minutes, certainly under three, with a 20-plus point lead intact, that would have to be all for the Wolfpack starters. Johnson on the interior, kicks it for Godot. Contested three, and he's fouled by Brandon Davis, who picks up his fourth personal foul. If this were a closer game, Loyola's foul trouble would be a real concern. Reitzel has three, Dumas has three, Smith has three, and now Davis has four. Well, the Wolfpack probably not sweating it too much at the moment. Godot, an 83% foul shooter, and he has three here. Senior from Mesa, who started uh, nearly every game last year, has had a smaller role this season. Three-point specialist, and uh, of course shoots very well here at the line. Started his uh, career at Cal State San Marcos, at the four-year level at least, after stint at Phoenix College out of Mesa High School. There is Stacy Hollowell, who uh, has good problems in the sense of a 20-point lead, but nonetheless the unenviable task for a head coach of trying to pick the right moment to get his starters off their feet. Johnson for three. Rebound loose and pulled in by Muller. Burns in transition. Harassed by Fisher. Ball was loose. Johnson grabbed it. He was wrapped up by Burns and a foul. 
Burns picks up his third. This game, when the ball has been loose, whether it's on a rebound or in those scramble situations, has been ultra physical. That whistle was even a little bit late, and Burns just about wrapped up Johnson around the waist like he was going to tackle him. Johnson has free throws, gets the front end of a one and one. 78% shooter for the season. Mentioned uh, how often he's been in double figures of late, but it just hasn't been working for Angelo Johnson tonight. Just one of nine from the field. And only four points after he went for 22 against William Jessup Saturday. Five now for Johnson, 18 point low in the lead with the basketball inside five and a half minutes to go. Both teams are in the double bonus already. It's been a chippy second half. Reitzel with a dangerous pass that finds Fava. Johnson pokes it away from Muller, collects in the backcourt. But Loyola hasn't even initiated offense, and the shot clock is down to 12. Johnson is all over Muller. Smith comes out for the screen. Muller has to hurry. Give and go with the right soul. Shot is blocked. Right soul follows and scores. ACU did everything right for 29 seconds of the shot clock, and it just ended up with Reitzel on the offensive rebound. Flowers for three. Good looking shot, but off the heel, and Fava grabs the rebound. 20 point lead for Loyola. Now only four and a half minutes to go. Dumas is waiting to come in the game of the next dead ball. Well, you'd think there have to be more substitutions imminent now for the Wolfpack. Reitzel right, so running down the shot clock. Fava all the way inside. A rare drive and layup for Fava just couldn't get it to go. Johnson corrals the rainbow outlet pass. Couldn't spin it home off the glass. He's just one for 10. And Loyola the other way. Reitzel lobs it inside of the no look to Smith. Had it batted out of his hands underneath by Fisher. Flowers. Bumped by Muller and two free throws coming up with 3.54 to go in the game. We will step aside. Loyola leads 70 to 50 inside of four minutes to go. That is all separating the Wolfpack now from a trip to the NAIA National Championship game tomorrow night. Back in a moment. I've dedicated my life to higher education because I had what Gallup calls the magical experience in college. At St. Thomas University, we strive for that magic for our students every day. Like mentoring faculty who will challenge you academically, character formation activities outside of the classroom, and required real-world experience before graduation. Visit stu.edu today so we can start the magical for you at STU. walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Play of the game is brought to you by Really, and although there haven't been a lot of highlights tonight for Arizona Christian, they did supply us a, at least one as we get a look at uh, Burns on the outlet from Reitzel, and he lays it home. Our play of the game then on the ACU side, Bryce Davis with the emphatic dunk for the Firestorm. They trail by 20. 3.54 to go in the game. And Dennis Flowers, the sophomore from Chicago at the free throw line. <laughs> 
Flowers gets both. ACU putting on a full court press. Dumas back on for Loyola. He's playing with three fouls, although he's sat out for essentially all the second half, so his foul trouble is now moot after he had three all in the first half. Loyola running down the shot clock. Smith with six to shoot, all the way to the rim, and he's fouled. Terry Smith Jr. will shoot two. He's hit two of four at the free throw line tonight. Oh, of four from the field for the senior. Two points, five rebounds. And he gets both. Flowers and Johnson kicked by Reitzel. Not sure how many he's kicked tonight. Got to be at least three or four. Flowers thought about stepping into a three. Hayden wants it. A little too strong. Rebound loose underneath. Godot grabbed it. Takes it out to the three-point line and fires. And he sticks it up there in between the rim and the backboard. That'll go to the possession arrow, which will keep it down to this end with Arizona Christian. 16 on the shot clock. They reset that to 20. 3.03 to go. Loyola looks uh, bound for the NAI National Championship. Godot drops in the lob off the inbound. Dumas fouled by Johnson. Johnson called for his second foul. Both teams well over the limit in the second half, so it's two free throws for Dumas. Smith checks out. Galloway back on for Loyola, but it doesn't seem like Stacy Hollowell is uh, planning on emptying his bench anytime soon. Johnson tries to whip one all the way across to Hayden, who connects from three. He's hit a trio of three-pointers, really the only Firestorm player who shot the ball well. And he's called for the foul on Dumas. Gives us a chance to see another look at the uh, three-pointer by Hayden. That's not what we wanted. Dumas has two free throws. And if this is the end of the line for Jeff Rutter in the Firestorm, a commendable season nonetheless. First ever appearance in the Fab Four. This is the second meeting between the two schools in history. ACU won the only prior one. It was in this building in March 2019, 83 to 77 victory that sent them to the quarterfinals in a game in which Reitzel, Burns, and Smith all scored in double figures for the Wolfpack. Godot gets a second chance. It ends up with Fava. That gives you an idea of how long this score has been together for Loyola. Go back to 2019 here. That was four years ago. I should say three years ago. And all three of them were not only on the team, but were substantial pieces and all scored in double figures, although Loyola lost that game. Stolen by Hayden, Dumas contests, and he fouls him. That's four on Dumas, and Hayden goes to the free throw line. But Loyola stretched it out. ACU had that little run late on in the first half. Got it down to 11 at halftime. They could have even cut it down to single digits at the break. Loyola stretched it back out pretty quickly to 
with more than 15 points early in the second half, and it's really never been competitive since. Looks like a very, very good season is going to come to a close for Arizona Christian, which will fall to 31 and 5. Loyola, meanwhile, will improve to 36 and 1, and this will be the Wolfpack's 20th consecutive victory. Only one loss on their schedule. It was on January 17th against Faulkner, a team that they then beat handily in the round of 16 here in Kansas City. That was a hard collision between Davis and Hayden. And Brandon Davis has just fouled out of the game. You could feel that collision courtside. Hard hit between those two. And ACU will get it back with Loyola up by 17 and 2.02 to go. No matter what happens uh, in the later game tonight, I would think Loyola will be your favorite going into tomorrow night's national championship game against the winner of our second semifinal this evening, Talladega and Thomas Moore. Gives us a chance to look at our player of the game presented by Bology. Elevate your game, and it is Miles Burns, who had 16 points, nine rebounds, a pair of assists for Loyola tonight on seven of 11 shooting. Hit a couple of threes on five tries from deep. And, of course, he is a difference maker at the defensive end of the floor as well. The four-time reigning SSAC Defensive Player of the Year. Tells a little bit about the dominance at that end of the floor from the senior from Houston. Should also note Zach Reitzel, who could have easily taken home player of the game as well. 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists for him. The two of them, a couple of seniors from Texas who have led the way for the Wolfpack tonight. Miles Burns is your player of the game presented by Bology. So ACU with the basketball down by 17, 2.02 to go in the second half. Dennis Flowers out to Johnson. Hayden wants another. Couldn't quite get that one. Rebound loose. Godot is fouled. And ACU will go back to the free throw line. So Godot has free throws. He is two of three at the strike this evening. Just a minute 46 to go, but Stacey Hallowell doesn't seem uh, interested in clearing out his bench. ACU has cut the deficit down to 15, and Hayden gives the foul quickly on Dumas. That's the fourth on Paul Hayden. He's been one of the only offensive threats for ACU, certainly the only one who has posed any threat from the perimeter. Dumas has made all four of his free throws tonight. Five Wolfpack players in double figures. Reitzel leads with 20, Burns 16, Galloway 12, Dumas and Fava have 10 apiece. Muller and Smith have added four each, and Brandon Davis, who averages better than 15 a night, has not scored, although he did pitch in two rebounds and six assists before fouling out. Flowers. Wants the three, just hasn't been there for ACU tonight. Four of 22 as a team from three-point range. Reitzel has to get it over and does. Didn't really know where he was going with that, I don't think, when he left his feet, but throws it all the way across to Burns. Harassed by Hayden and a foul. That will be all for Paul Hayden. He joins Brandon Davis in the disqualified category. <laughs> Interesting, too, considering the health issues Loyola has had that we've talked about now this week. 
Stacy Hollowell still only used eight players in this game. And he has not cleared the bench at all. So we'll see what that means for the legs of the Wolfpack tomorrow when they have to play for the second night in a row. It will be against the winner of Talladega and Thomas Moore coming up in our second semifinal. And Talladega in particular has a lot of depth and plays a lot of pieces. In fact, 11 different players have started a game this year for Talladega. And only two have started 30 or more of their 35 plus games now this year. Burns misses both, rebound to Godot. Here comes Flowers, lost the dribble, but a foul. I think that's going to go on Miles Burns. It's his fourth. Minute 13 to go in this first semifinal, and Dennis Flowers to the free throw line where he's hit both tonight. He has eight points, trying to become the third ACU player in double figures. So one more look at the bracket. I think you can pretty safely advance Loyola into that championship game tomorrow night to face the winner of Talladega and Thomas Moore coming up tonight after we finish up. National title will be decided tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 7 locally in Kansas City on ESPN3. Make sure to be tuned in for that. We will have uh, either a new national champion in the event that somebody other than Loyola wins or the Wolfpack will win their first since 1945. So it's been at least 77 years since this year's champion was crowned. We just don't know who it's going to be yet. Dumas has it knocked away by Flowers, but Loyola keeps possession with a minute and six to go. But that will be a really interesting storyline tomorrow, especially if it's Talladega. Foul called against Godot and Dumas right back to the free throw line. He's been there off in these last few minutes. Thomas Moore also does not have a very deep bench and has been dealing with uh, some health issues as well. So the Saints don't play a lot of players. We could see a couple of similar teams in that regard facing off. The Saints also do not turn the ball over often at all, which would be interesting against Loyola. Thomas Moore averages only uh, nine turnovers per game, third fewest in the country. Of course, you've seen Loyola's harassing defense tonight. Godot the rebound. Bradford to Godot, deep three straight on. Galloway the rebound. Dumas is trapped but gets rid of it to Galloway. Ahead to Fava. And a blocking foul was called behind the play on Godot. Forty-nine and a half seconds remaining. And more free throws for Loyola. Wolfpack have already attempted 32 free throws. Galloway is now one for two on the night. ACU has shot really well at the free throw line, to be fair. That's been a, a bright spot, 81%. Loyola shooting only in the mid-60s. But the three-point shooting has been substantially better for Loyola. Flowers hits a deep one. But ACU didn't get nearly enough of that tonight. And, of course, the turnovers. That was the defining factor in this game. So no matter what, we'll have something interesting for you tomorrow evening. Here's Flowers. That one was a bomb. Burns is fouled by Godot. Arizona Christian has been intent to uh, extend this game as much as humanly possible. To be fair, Loyola not a good free throw shooting team. So if there was any team that might be able to cough up a 15 point lead in the final minute, this might be it. Although on the other hand, they play phenomenal defense. So not easy to run up points against them in a hurry. 
Be interesting to see as well in our second game tonight if Thomas Moore has any discernible advantage in the crowd. Obviously, both of these teams are a long way from Kansas City. Cincinnati area is not exactly close, but it's drivable at least. Godot left it short. Flowers underneath. Off the hesitation scores. So the lead for Loyola is down to 12. Take a lot more missed free throws to give ACU a real chance. Reitzel in transition. He was going to go all the way in and just lay it in, which tells you something, I think, about Loyola's free throw shooting that they'd be happy even to take a quick two and just keep extending the lead, even with a shot clock off, up by 12. Most teams would just get it over the timeline and wait to be fouled. And that hasn't, didn't look like it was going to be Zach Reitzel's approach. But if it's Talladega, how can they use their depth and their legs to their advantage against Loyola? Maybe try to play at pace, although that would be ambitious. Got to be able to keep control of the basketball playing at pace even against this defense, and that's quite an ask. Or Thomas Moore, what would it look like if Loyola ran into an opponent that they couldn't turn over all that often, if Thomas Moore could hold the basketball? Would that help cut down on Loyola's advantage? Godot has his three blocked by Reitzel. Johnson bumped by Dumas and a foul with 11.3 seconds to go. There have been 53 combined fouls in this game. I think everybody could go for fewer whistles in game two. We'll see how that turns out. Dumas did end up fouling out. He's the third player to have been disqualified. Johnson at the free throw line, just not his night. One for 10 from the field, missed all five of his threes. He has six points, four rebounds, four assists, make it seven points for Johnson. True last gas for ACU, long pass to Galloway. He's going to jam it, and that's the explanation of how this went. Just too much Loyola. And the Wolfpack, for the first time since 1945, will play for a national title. Loyola controlled this game from start to finish. 82 to 70 is the final. That makes it seem an awful lot closer than it really was. And the Wolfpack will await the winner of tonight's second semifinal between number two seed Thomas Moore and number two seed, Talladega. And that is all for us from Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. For our entire crew, Nate Gatter saying so long and hope to see you just a little while from now. And we'll have game two coming up just about 20 minutes in change. We will decide who will be headed to the NAIA National Championship to face Loyola.